Chair, Mohamed Noor, I'm the political advisor to the governor. Morning Chair, I'm Vincent Mutanda, the Chief of Staff. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm Elijah Mwaro, Chief Officer of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. Good morning, Chair and Honorable Members of the Senate. My name is Ahmed Adin Hifo, Chief of Senate in Charge of Roads and Public Works. Thank you. Good morning, Chair. My name is Ongoma Kucho, Advisor on Legal Affairs. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chair. Engineer Andrew Meso is my name. I'm the CEC in Charge of Water, Environment, Irrigation, Climate Change and Energy. Good morning, Chair. My name is Oscar Obunyo, Director, Governor's Press Unit. Thank you, Chair. I'm C.P. Evans Wandera Wangata, the Director, Budget. Honorable Chair, my name is CPA C.S. Roslyn Mumbasi. I'm the Director, Accounting Services. Thank you. Morning, Chair. I'm C.P.A. Maximila Ayoko, Director, Internal Audit. Morning, Chair. I'm Evans Nabai, Accountant, Finance, Busia County. Morning, Chair. I'm Alexander Molo Jumbo, Protocol of the Governor. I believe everyone has been introduced. And there is a lady who has not introduced herself. Thank you, Chair. I'm Margaret Wanyama, the PA to Governor. Okay. Uh, the, those who have not been introduced must be members of the media, the fourth estate, you are welcome. Our next order is to adopt the agenda. Um, our, our agenda is as stated in the pack before us. Uh, we have already done the, the, the brief, and now we are going straight to agenda number five on meeting with the county executive of Busia. Could I get a proposal from the members? Yeah, chair, propose. Thank you, Senator Mario Mumar. Chair, I'll second. Thank you, Senator Onyonka. The next order is administration of oath. The clerk shall guide the governor in that. I, I Dr. Paul Otoma Nyongesa, do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before this committee in respect to matters before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Next will be your tabling of your management responses. Uh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair, sir, I hereby table the following documents before the committee. The management responses and accompanying annexures for the county executive of Busia for the financial year 2020-2021 and 2021-2022. Auditor General, I believe that what is before us was uh, shared um, in advance, could you confirm that you have been able to review? Thank you, Chair. What is uh, before us has been was presented to us on uh, 7th March 2024. We have uh, reviewed uh, the evidence and the submission, the response, and we had we've had engagement with the management chair. So we are ready to proceed. Okay. Thank clerk, you. clerk of the Senate, can you confirm that the timeline is not there too? Yes, Chair. I do confirm that we receive the responses on time. Okay, that's great. It's an improvement from uh, the last time where we could not agree because of uh, technicalities. Senator Onyonka. Um, Honorable Troma, you know I was in Parliament with you when you were fighting for the gender issue. You've just brought uh, two women and you have 19 men. You are disappointing me. Governor, remembering that you are on oath. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think in Busia we adhere to that uh, uh, one-third gender rule. It just happened today that uh, 
some of the staff that were around uh, may not have balanced the agenda in terms of, of being here because some were already here in Nairobi. Uh, but we adhere to that as a county. Thank you. Um, I, I think it's not an idle suggestion. Just make sure that the, your delegation is reflective of what the Constitution requires. Yeah. Um, and uh, is there any other preliminary observation? Yeah, I just want to find out how many ladies do you have as uh, CEC and chief officers? Uh, Chair, I think we have adhered to the constitution. We have the CC finance, we have CC education, we have CC public service. Uh, yeah, in terms of the CCs. Three against? Against uh, seven. Against. Uh, okay, a ratio of <laughs> three to seven. Okay. You have tried, anyway. Yeah, 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 let's just make sure that what we see here then becomes the face of Busia mm. in terms of, 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 of ratios. If we don't have any other preliminary observation, we would um, uh, go to the report of the Auditor General. But I think the, there's a, a, a matter that was raised during our brief, which I think as a chair I would... I would be reckless if I don't deal with it. The signatory to the responses that are before us is the acting county secretary. Um, Governor, you may want to let us know why these responses have been signed by the acting county secretary and not a substantive county secretary. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we the substantive county secretary we still have got some issues some are medical some are basically just that's why he's not in office some may go beyond being medical but uh, for the so, time so there's a county secretary yes a substantive county secretary. yes that's why he's acting there is so is if he's acting so it means he's out on suspension, out on leave? No, out no, he's not on suspension, Chair. Uh, he had an accident, but beyond the accident, the way I say, there are a few other issues that need to be resolved. But he, 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 he's around. But he's inval invalid as we speak today. But the county secretary was approved by the assembly, is properly in office. Uh, Chair... Uh, that's why I said I may not be able to answer that now because uh, that's the county secretary I found there. So those other details, as I said, can be canvassed maybe in another time. No, it's a yeah. matter that was substantive in our earlier brief. Yes. In fact, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a significant matter because yes. uh, the question was who are, the who are the officers with fiduciary responsibility within the county executive yes and so the issue of an acting county secretary came up we didn't have the information that you are profiling yes i believe the gentleman seated to your right yes introduced himself as a deputy county secretary, secretary. and acting county secretary mm. acting uh, while the other while the substantive office holder is invalid yes so yeah. that's that's a that's explanation that's the explanation it's not that he's pending approval by the assembly no okay mm. Uh, Senator Dulo? Uh, Chair, uh, I think it is good uh, the governor makes it clear because he said he is, has medical issue and then other issues. Is it necessary or maybe at this stage to bring it to the attention of the senators? What are those other issues? And number two, why is he not in the office? If he's not on suspension, interdiction, or sick leave, how is he absent? The deputy is acting. Uh, Chair, he, he, he had a terrible accident. I had a meeting with him the other day. He's still on crunches. And as I said, uh, you know, through that accident, which is basically now medical issues are a bit of personal confidential issues. That's why I say that maybe currently he's not able to be in office. But in addition to that, we were also still having some consultations. So I, I think, Chair, then the position should be he's officially on either sick leave but he's not on suspension chair it's just on medical okay mm. senator Nyonka? could i make a <clears throat> i'm sorry chair could i make a, a suggestion there that it looks like what the governor is not saying we can discuss it in camera for the simple reason i think i'm 
I'm trying to realize that there could be privacy issues about this case. So I would really request that we allow him. He gives us the information camera before we wind up the hearings today. I don't see it as a, a, a breach of confidentiality because it's extremely important. Whoever signs these uh, reports, um, it's, 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 a, it's an important consideration. Assuming it was signed by the clerk of works, Busia County, is it acceptable? Definitely not, because it does not bear a fiduciary responsibility. And um, ideally, we have just made a resolution that we are going to do a guidebook to county the governments on how to package their responses to the Senate, on who takes ownership of the responses to the Senate. It's easy to argue that a county secretary is the one who signs correspondences on behalf of a county. But when it comes to financial matters, they are, are the persons with fiduciary responsibility. And they are defined in the financial statements. They are listed there, CEC Finance, Chief Officer Finance. The county secretary is not listed as an officer with fiduciary responsibility. So when we saw the acting county secretary signing, we must dispel any notion that there is mischief without going into the conditions of the office holder. So we are not breaching any confidentiality, but satisfying ourselves that there is no mischief uh, by having the acting county secretary sign on behalf of the county government. So much guided, Chair. Senator Maria Mumar. Uh, Chair, on that line, uh, for how long will be acting? as a county secretary? Uh, that's why I say these are matters that we are, I say there could be other issues because just like the question you have posed, for how long can we be in this kind of situation? And uh, well, as you say, we will be guided if there are this kind of thing because some, some because things are beyond, uh, you know, as a medical condition is beyond what you can do sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Senator Mariam? Actually, I'm asking because of uh, acting supposed to be within the six month. Now, on the medical ground, that person can maybe out of office for the next two years or three years to come. So it cannot be somebody cannot act the position for more than six months. So I, I think we are dealing with if it indeed it's true, it's invalidity and governor your own oath. So what you say orally, we take it to be true, yes. as by the oath you have taken. If it's invalidity. And if the gentleman is already in the establishment as a deputy county secretary, is that a substantive appointment? Yes. Uh, yeah, so if it's invalidity, then it's a different case, as opposed to when you have someone facing charges or when you have a vacancy. Uh, so it appears that there's no vacancy. There's an office holder who is invalid uh, or, or who is, uh, who is not... Um, um, out, is out on medical uh, grounds. So that might um, change our perspective on the duration uh, for which a person can act. But I want to hear from the Senator for Busia before we dispense with, with this. Yeah, uh, uh, Chair and Your Excellency, I, what I know is that uh, as Senator Miriam has said, account acting capacity is only allowed to a maximum of, it's supposed to be really three months, renewable ones, giving a maximum of six months. So what we'll be expecting in that condition might be for His Excellency to check out an evaluation of the substantive office holder and whether he's able to resume work or not, because there's also retirement on medical grounds, unfortunately so, so that the public office cannot be hamstrung by the condition of an individual. So the governor might consider those kind of provisions so that we get a substantive office holder in this very, very critical... Because the county secretary is your mouthpiece. That who communicates. So you need to... Because I think uh, you, have, you have been acting from December. We, I appointed him in January to act in that position. In January? Yeah. You remember, Chair, when we were here, we had somebody else also still acting in that position. Yeah. Yeah. So it means that, uh, and again, the next six months, you might be appointing somebody by June. So we may need to, to, to have a proper evaluation of the substantive office holder and see whether it's somebody who can resume work 
or we cannot resume work then unfortunately we may be forced to go the route of retiring on uh, medical grounds but as the chair says it's a critical issue but i think in this occasion the chair might it would be lenient enough to allow us to continue yeah i think we could proceed uh, uh, having listened to that background because what we need to satisfy ourselves is that there is no mischief uh, in, uh, in 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 that signatory but uh, take guidance as offered by the committee to avoid having these conversations in future. I think it's just important to get things done the right way. Uh, for the county secretary, we wish him well, quick recovery, um, irrespective of the circumstances, so that he can continue rendering his, his public duties. Uh, we have dispensed with that matter. We can now go straight to the report of the Auditor General. We have two financial years. So we'll start with the, with the latest financial year, which is 2021-2022. We have already received a brief from the Auditor General. We have also received a brief from the Parliamentary Budget Office. There are some issues that we've been appraised uh, on and we've been told they've been resolved. I think where there's no contention, we'll just mark them and take the written responses. But where there is... Um, partial resolution, we will have to go into the issues in detail. So starting with the 2021-2022 Auditor General, give us your opinion and then take us through the basis of that opinion. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. A report of the Auditor General and the County Executive of Busia for the year ended 30 June 2022. Chair, we 